I just want to do a quick little midweek video to run through a few things going on. Heaps going on. Heaps of hap heaps has happened, and we've got a heap coming up as well between now and Christmas. The topic of today's video will be to run through my roof rack and rooftop tent and why that is now missing and what's happening there and also the tub is going and we're putting something different down the back there and run through some upcoming plans and answer a few questions as well. Firstly I just want to say massive thanks to the support I've been getting on all the recent content and videos and everything I've been doing, it's been awesome. Keep leaving those likes and comments on the videos, it makes a massive difference in helping my videos grow and get out there. And everyone really liked that video I did on the analytics of my YouTube, which is awesome. People yeah, seem to really, really enjoy that and it was good to show everyone a bit of a behind the scenes of how it all works. And I want to answer a few questions about that too. This is also a brand new microphone I'm running, the Rode Video Mic Shotgun Microphone NTG. It's also quite windy today, so I have to be a test of how it goes in the wind and how it goes compared to my old one. Now, the first thing is what the hell happened here? Why does my roof have gouges in it and uh, tape over holes where the roof rack was mounted? Which is not good. If you follow me on social media, you would see that we've just done a trip to Fraser Island. We're up there for about a week. First day of Fraser Island, my whole roof rack and rooftop tent fell off. Now, basically, just the whole thing snapped off. Fell off down over the side of the car, over the other side, and just fell off. That was it. It ripped out the holes where it was mounted. Now, it's caused a big look into the situation for me. Um, into why my roof rack failed and roof rack loadings and roof rack mountings and everything else now is a massive uh, you know there's a massive thing there so I'm going to do a whole separate video on roof racks and how to mount them properly how to look after yours how to be safe out there how to load them up properly consider your load ratings and things like that mine came down to the, f the fact that I'd slightly overloaded it, which I was unaware of. There was a few various things that went wrong that I'll explain in more detail. Now, I spent about an hour on the phone a couple of days ago to one of Rhino's engineers there, and he's run me through a lot of things in relation to vehicle manufacturers and how they mount all these systems and everything. So I've got a heap of information. I'm just putting it all together to bring through a video on that because it's, you know, obviously no one wants that to happen on the trip, but... It was lucky for us and it fell off on the beach on the sand at a slow speed. If, if that had to come off on the highway, then who knows what could have happened. You know, someone could end up, if that comes through someone's windscreen, then it's not going to be good. So I, I really want to do a video on that just to sort of educate and inform because I was not aware of a lot of these things and I, I know a lot of people aren't. Now, a few mistakes were made here on my behalf and maybe a few other areas as well. So just want to learn from your mistakes, get that information out there for others. Now, given that that has happened, I've put a claim through to insurance. I'm with NRMA Insurance. I told them my roof rack was mounted into my roof. It's come off. It's done a bit of damage on the way down and it's also um, done a bit of damage on the side of my vehicle. And it's also damaged my roof up there as well. So they've covered it all through my local repairer. So my car's going in next week. So I'll be out for a full week. They're going to pull the whole roof apart and um, repair it all and repair a bit of damage where it did over the other side there. So that's all getting covered. I've got to pay excess, which is a bit annoying, but you know, at least it's all getting sorted and all getting sorted reasonably quickly before Christmas. And I made really good. They only took them like two days and the claim was all processed, cleared, and it was ready to go, ready to be sorted. Now I've gone with Rhino again. I'm getting the new backbone system. But we're going to mount it differently. We're going to pull the headliner out and bolt it the whole way through the roof. You just have to be careful of your curtain airbags, wiring loom. There's a massive amount of information there. But as I said, I'll go through that in more detail in the upcoming video about roof racks. But that's all getting fixed on the car, which is good. So I have a new roof rack up there. Now, that brings me to the next thing. This tub got torn up a fair bit because what happened on our Fraser trip was we were having to put the rooftop tent in the back of the tub and the roof rack each time wanted to move camp which is a nightmare but yeah we still had an awesome trip up there we still got over the initial downfall of the whole rooftop falling off in the pouring rain on the first day next to us but we got that 
under control. So there's going to be a couple of two good Fraser Island videos coming. They're not going to be out to probably after Christmas. I, I'm still like that two, three months difference between filming and releasing the main trip videos. By the time it's finally come, I get this question multiple, multiple times a week in relation to why do you not have a tray and canopy? It's happening. Now I've run a tub for five years. It's been a good run on my last vehicle and on this one. Keep it simple, uh, keep the weight and cost down. You know, it worked reasonably well for me, but there was always that lack of space and those things you were missing here and there. Now, given that I am not someone who goes camping here and there, as we all know, I'm out all the time. Big trips, using it, and this is sort of my lifestyle and this is what I do. So it only makes sense that I upgrade to a tray and canopy, which is going to give me more room and a better setup to suit my four-wheel driving, camping, and filming needs. Now, just to answer a couple of things I've already got through social media, which is a bit ahead of the YouTube, is uh, you're just like everyone else. You're just getting a train canopy. We only wanted to watch you because you had a tub. I'm not going to watch you anymore. All, all the things like that, which is definitely always interesting. Um, now, it's my car. My choice, my ute. I want to do what works and suits my needs and I think this is going to be better for me. Change is good, it's time for a change. We've showed that you can take a tub all over Australia, I've had it for five years. Let's try something different. And at the end of the day, while I do try and produce content that obviously people are going to enjoy and meet those needs, my main focus is to do what I like and what I enjoy and hope people enjoy that too. because. I'm enjoying it, I'm happy, I'm producing better content. If I just start doing what people want and what people say to me, say, oh, don't get a tub, don't get a tub, you're a sellout, blah, blah, do this, do that, oh, we won't watch anymore. Like, what? what's the point? I miss out on an awesome tray and canopy setup because, you know, whatever, 15, 20 people had a go at me for changing. And as I said, my car, my choice. So. Hopefully people enjoy it. I know a few people won't, but they're not going to watch my videos anymore. Well, that's that. I'm not, I'm not going to change because I just want to do what I enjoy and what makes me happy. Same with like music on my videos. So I've got get complaints from time to time about music, but I'm the one who has to watch that music clip 30, 40 times when I'm editing. And I want to enjoy the process and I want to be happy with what comes out at the end. So with music, I've gone for what will sort of i think will suit most people but also what i really enjoy as well i'm not going to put music that i hate on my videos just because other people like it and then the other thing with the train canopy is sponsorship and it costs a lot because obviously this costs a lot to get a train canopy set up um which is one of the reasons i haven't done in the past because it's a lot of money and i'd rather put the money towards a camera equipment um, doing my trips away filming content. For example, this setup I'm filming on right here now is a $6,000 setup. That's a lot of money. Okay, but that's what I sort of wanted to put my money towards. Now, just to be clear from the start, I am getting a lot of help with this through Cost and Build as a sponsorship from the company that's doing it, which is G Works in Port Macquarie. Now, they're a, they're a local company, they're local to me, so I'm working with a local business, which I really like. It's all Australian. Uh, manufacturing and designing and everything else it's all it's all done here and they they've been in the fabrication business for a long time but they're more focusing now on four-wheel drive trays and canopies I've gone and chatted to them I've said the main thing is I need this thing body strong because if anyone's gonna break it it's gonna be me so they may <laughs> have said they're gonna do that I've had lots of chats to them they're really good they really know what they're doing and they want me to sort of test out all their products because they're gonna be coming up with lots of new designs, uh, lots of new systems for these train canopies and they want someone that can actually get out there, test it out on the hard tracks and obviously a bit of advertising for them in return as well to get their business out there. I will be filming some of the build series of that. Probably just do like a big episode on the build on YouTube. They didn't ask me to do that. They said, we, we don't mind what you do. We just want you to get it out there on the trips, but I wanted to make a build video to show you guys behind the scenes of what goes into the process of building a train canopy. I'm already learning a massive amount, 
um, because I don't know, I knew stuff all about it. So this is what I love. You try something new, you learn so much. I'm learning an incredible amount already, which is amazing. Now with the train canopy, we've been working really hard on the designs, the weights, how it's all gonna get laid out. Because the canopy and train canopy comes down to room, usable space setup versus weight. Now I'm willing to sacrifice some space and usable setup to keep the weight down. Now with that in mind, we've gone an alloy, we're gonna go and not, we haven't gone it yet, it's being built at the moment, but we've gone an alloy tray, 1650 long, 1800 wide. We've gone a alloy canopy, which will be 1200 long. So the tray will be similar length to the tub here. We'll be getting rid of that rear bar, which will get rid of a heap of weight as well. Um, they've said it's not gonna come out that much heavier as a base setup. It just really comes then down to what I put in it and how much I load up, which is like any vehicle. Then the canopy will be 1200 long, so it will come down to around here, so not too far over that rear axle, because you don't want that weight down the back. We're gonna pull the rear tire out, mount it up on the back, um, because down there, it's just going to be a massive reducer, reducement in departure angle, and it's gonna get flogged down there now once that rear bar's gone. We could leave the rear bar, but it's just kind of ugly We're on a tray. It's a lot of weight, a lot of pointlessness. But we're just working out a few things like we're gonna, that's the recovery points. So we've got to get some recovery points in the back there somewhere else now. And the tow hook as well, which I never use anyway, but we'll still try and get one back in there at some stage here. I do need to tow. So if we get a tow hook in there, you obviously pull the ball out put a recovery hitch in there and you could use that as a recovery point at the rear. That'll be the base design of the tray and canopy and then we're still working out all the different bits and pieces we are going to add. So we'll have a, we'll have a wheel down the back with a dual jerry can holder for fuel or water depending on the trip. Uh, the good thing of these guys is it's modular so you get the base set up and then you can add the bits and pieces as we go. So we just got to get the base set up done by Christmas which is only four or five weeks away get it all painted. I think we're gonna go the whole thing black, which is obviously a bit hotter. I just don't really, they said they could color code it white according to my car. I just don't really know if I like the idea of a white canopy. I'm still working out colors and painting. But yeah, get all the main stuff done, get some electrics in there, get a bit of a base set up for my January trip. And then next year we can just keep working and working on the design. So we're gonna add a water tank uh, in there somewhere. We're actually going to have no headboard because there's no point because I'm going to have the canopy on all the time. That'll mean we can move the canopy forward 100 mil, get rid of the weight and room the headboard takes up. But it just means we can't put a water tank in the headboard, so I'll probably put a water tank underneath along with a trundle drawer. Um, we'll put some toolboxes down the side back there. We'll get a drawer set up in there. We'll get a fridge set up. We'll get the electronics. It's going to be like a continued process awesome for me learning getting a better setup content to pass on to you guys knowledge to pass on to you guys what works better the tub or if the new setup's going to work better all those different things and we will probably mount the rooftop tent back on the canopy and then have the roof rack space at the front for free room which obviously bring my 50 kilo rooftop tent back a bit but it's just going to be mounted much better on the canopy but yeah, I'll be doing a full video on the roof rack, a full video on the build. So this, this is just a quick little update. There's going to be heaps of information in those to run through. We'll run through costs, run through materials, we'll run through weights, we'll run through, we'll run through it all. But let me know some ideas, because this video will come out next week. We'll still be in the process. Let me know some ideas of what you think would work well for me with the train canopy setup. Uh, things I could add in, colours, like, I don't know, all the different bits and pieces, any ideas you got and anything else you want to see. Now we got those couple of, that sun's probably not the best angle. Let's turn around the other way because the sun in my face against my background type thing. Hang on, let me just straighten this up a bit. Um, but yeah, that's sort of those couple of things covered. Where are we here? Now, we've got plenty of trip videos coming up. I'm trying to get them out as much as I can, but they're just, uh, they're a lot of work, those trip videos. So we've got a four part series coming up of Sticks River and Coffs Harbour, which will probably start like the week after this video, I'm thinking. 
can't remember the exact dates of all got it all set up. So that'll be coming out soon. Have that two part Fraser Island series coming out. That won't be till after Christmas. And then after Christmas, we'll be in the Victorian high country. We're going there in January, that's the plan. I won't have any room for anyone to come along. Um, Victorian high country is a place that I've got hundreds of requests of people to come. That's full, we're not, we're not taking anyone on that. That's just dad, myself and Kai, and that's what we love, these family trips. Mitch may come along for a little bit or chat or something, but yeah, it's, it's, it's just sort of the family time, the family trips, it's what it's what we uh, love doing, getting out there. So there won't be any room for anyone coming on that trip, maybe, maybe down the track or something. Now I'll run through a couple of questions from an analytics video. The first one was, if I watch on premium YouTube account, does the creator, aka me, still get paid? Yes, there's a separate thing, whereas if I get a view from a YouTube, if someone who's watching on a YouTube premium account where they've paid not to get ads, I still get paid per view of theirs. Another question was about tax. Yes, I get taxed on this. I declare all this on tax because um, I can't count it as a hobby because it's like I'm getting a bit through sponsorship, a bit through Patreon, a bit through YouTube. Like it's, you can't count, like it's building up enough that I can't claim it as a hobby. But I've got an ABN number. So I've got all that sorted, which means I can claim a lot of this stuff on tax, which is good because it brings my costs down a bit. So I claim my camera gear on tax. Um, when I do a trip, do my claim my fuel bills, my kilometers driven, um, you know, servicing in my car, repairs, basically as much as we can, all the bits and pieces gets claimed under under tax, which is good, Help, helps a little bit, but obviously I, I, you still have to pay tax just to bring, bring down the costs of that. And then I just put a question out, questionnaire out on Instagram. I'll just randomly pick two or three, I won't go on for too long, just pick two or three of them to answer um, the video, answer in this video the questions from Instagram, I'm hopeless. A lot of questions about the beard, the beard's uh, going strong, it's getting pretty rugged. I don't know how long I'm going to grow it, I thought it would be really hot in summer but it's not too bad. My hair's getting long as well so looking a bit wild at the moment. <laughs> what is your beard care routine? I actually comb my beard now, I have a comb and then I put beard oil in it as well because it gets really knotty otherwise and you get like dead skin in there. Is there a way you can mount the rooftop tent? Uh, half on the canopy and half on the roof. It's going to go on the canopy. You can't bolt it half in the roof and half on the canopy because there's heaps of flex between the between the cab and the back. So you'd just rip it out of one of those ends. You'd probably rip it out of the roof. You're not going to rip it out of the canopy. So you can't do that. But you can obviously we'll mount it on the canopy and then overhang it forwards a bit over the roof. What do you do for a living? School teaching. A um, few questions here about the rhino. Back, see the new backbone system is mounted better than the system I had before, but I'm still going to mount it better my own way. We'll run through all that. Iron Man driving lights, they've, yeah, they've been good. I, I don't know, it's hard to compare lights, but I'm, I'm happy with them. Um, the only thing is they're quite reflective on when you're driving like at night on the road and you've got a sign there, like whatever sign, uh, speed signs or a turn right sign, it's very reflective back on them, but I don't know if that's just all lights or if there's a way that some light companies overcome that issue, I don't know. How long have you been to four wheel driving? The last four wheel drive I had was my first one and that's when I got into it. So I don't know what we're talking now, probably coming up five years. Cape York or Simpson Desert Adventure in the future, are these placed on the radar? Definitely. Maybe Cape York or Simpson next year in the winter. Just You just gotta organize the time and everything. They're like six weeks trips. Where is, uh, where is somewhere you really want to explore that you haven't yet? Cape York, I'd say. It's got, you know, it's the common place everyone goes, but it looks bloody good up there. <laughs> oh, well, I want to go. Can you give us a rundown of the new nav? What issues have you had? What you like, dislike? Actually, a recent upgrade and issue I had was the rear trailing arms on this are pathetic from factory. And when I got it serviced recently, I realized I'd smashed and bent one and it moved my diff slightly out of line. So I got some new ones for 240 off Road Runner down in Melbourne. I went with them because they had them in stock, boom, out to me like a couple of days later, whereas Superior Engineering were like a two month wait and it was bent to crap. So yeah, upgraded the rear training arms. I've got some nice big ones on there now. They're like five or six mil steel, whereas the old ones were like 1.7 mil steel. Like it was, it was a bit pathetic. Um, but yeah, issues I've had with it, I don't know. New tires, the new rims have helped there in all the upcoming videos. They've brought that offset slightly out 
to help keep the car. It's like it's just outside the guard, like barely. It's enough to sort of, if you're in ruts, it hits the wheels first rather than the panels. And it also means I don't scrape on the chassis anymore. Maybe with the new tray and canopy, I'm gonna have to look in. I'm gonna have to probably upgrade the springs in the back um, just to some heavy duty ones. Whether or not I need airbags or anything like that, have to just see how it goes. Like it's not gonna be that much more weight in the end because of the way that we're doing it. My car, I'm trying to think what else. My car's making a noise at the moment, which I'm going in to get looked at on Monday. So that's another thing. So next week my car's gonna be at mechanics. The week after it's gone the whole week getting repaired. That leaves us two weeks for Christmas to get train canopy on, electricals done, get a set up in there. Oh, it's gonna be busy. Uh, a couple of questions about sponsorship. I'll cover that. There was actually an interesting one on that analytics video from Josh, which is, I'm curious how you go about getting sponsors outside of YouTube that actually pay you money. It's, I imagine it's a lot easier to just get free products and stuff, but actual cash must be a lot harder, which is true, because free stuff's awesome, but you, you get like you get so much of it and then it's kind of pointless and you don't really need any anymore. Like, there's just, there's just no point to it. M money's what you need because <clears throat> you need to pay the bills. You need to pay for all this camera gear, you need to pay for your car, you need to pay for your trips away, all the time that goes into it. Like this is this is just ramping up again lately. Like this is now coming up, you know, up to 40 hours a week work on this. If I'm not getting money, uh, I can't do it. I've cut back on schoolwork because I'm building up my money that I can, but ideally I want to cut back even more on schoolwork to keep getting this content out because it just becomes more and more work. And I think getting paid sponsorships from companies comes down to often you have to let them approach you. I find it hard, hard to approach companies and get something from them. Like you get the odd one where you approach and get something back, but a lot of the time it comes down to companies contacting me first. And it may be with an offer of free gear, which you can take, sort of try out, do a bit of stuff for them. And then if I don't really like it, well then that's it, it's gone. I'm not gonna use stuff I don't like, it's out the door. But if it's something that I back and support and really like, then I sort of go back to them with the potential of working together with some actual paid work. Cause I've said sponsorship stuff before, I'm not gonna promote stuff that I don't like or I don't stand by or I don't believe in or that I can't be honest with. And that's really good about this train canopy company. They want me to be really honest about what works or what didn't work or what I want changed or what I liked or didn't liked. They really have made that clear. They don't want me to be dishonest with them or anyone. And they want, uh, they want that feedback and they want that honest feedback. And it's the same with Drifter who I do work with. Like Luke is really good. He wants that honest feedback. If he sends me stuff and he says, if you don't like it, please don't promote it to your audience. I don't want you to promote something that you don't like. Just send it back to me and, you know, we'll give something else a try that you actually might like and use. And they're very casual. There's no sort of, the company he's trying to work, to work with, very casual. There's no strict guidelines on what I, there's no contracts. There's nothing that I have to do or have to say or have to promote. It's more just casually using <clears throat> and, you guys generally find that really interesting well as well. You always get the sponsorship police come through who just want to abuse the hell out of you for uh, using something that you've been given for free. But the other thing to consider that is if is how much work <laughs> I've put into this just to get a bit of free gear. I, I would have been much better off sticking off school teaching if I had wanted to make money. Because um, the amount of hours and that, like people say, oh man, you're so lucky you get this free gear, which yeah, there's a bit of luck there too, but there's also not that much luck. Like you just work bloody hard, put a lot of work into this and a lot of your passion and time and you get a bit of free gear back in return, which is good. But as I said, I would have been better off going to off school teaching if I was trying to, um, you know, if that's all it's about, free gear. Oh, because I could have paid, I could have bought four times the gear I have now if I had just worked at school every day. So yeah, I do want you guys to be, be aware, especially the sponsorship police, that um, I'm ve still very honest and I won't take anything on that I don't believe in or I can't stand behind, but people really like seeing products and I have shown products on my videos from the start, okay? Because you're out filming, you film the tracks, you film the sites, it's good to show little bits and pieces along the way to break that up, 
okay, it gives me content and it's stuff that I think, hey, you guys might actually like this, like this works really well for me, so you guys might want to see it, use it, try it out, like it's, it's all stuff that I believe in. But yeah, it comes back to that, definitely getting paid sponsorship is harder, but it's about sort of working with a company, either buying their stuff or if they've come to you and then coming back to them, hey, I really like your stuff, I've been getting it out there, you know, it looks like you got a few sales from it, how about we do a bit of paid work together. Not those exact words, but that's a general concept. And the way you guys can give back there is if you do buy products from a company, okay, let's just say the train canopy company, say uh, you're really happy with what they've done to my ute, you really like it, give them a call and then say, oh, we saw it on Tyler's videos and, you know, gave us the idea to give you guys up a call. You see something from Drifter, you know, mention my name because it helps me out because if they're paying me money to advertise for them type thing and, you know, get their product out there, well, they want to see, obviously, return on that as well. So if they're not seeing return, then they're not going to keep supporting me. So support the companies that support me and my content. And I think I do a reasonable good job of showing products but not making it a too in your face advertising shove it down your throat type way i just try and keep it casual honest relaxed all right that'll do i've wasted enough of your time I've, i just sit down to these videos i'm talking so long who knows what this has come out now that's like 30 or 40 minutes but thank you a lot of things coming up stay tuned and i'll see you in the next video P.S. Hopefully this my new microphone worked well. If it didn't, then that's annoying. And I'll go back to my old one. But this is a more expensive one. $400 microphone, so it should be better. I just want to do a quick midweek video. Little video. Quick, quick video. Little, quick, quick, little. Cool. Start again. Firstly, I will just... Firstly, I just want to say massive thanks to the support and every... by Tones and I. Let's begin.